Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we have a special interview for the NWSL playoffs ahead of the semifinals. A quick reminder to subscribe, subscribe to us on YouTube so that you never miss out whenever we go live. Today, we are joined by San Diego Wave and United States Women's National Team defender, number one draft pick in the 2022 NWSL draft, MVP, rookie of the year, and defender of the year nominee, Naomi Girma. Welcome back to Attacking Third. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm so excited to be back after like a year. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. We were all literally just talking about it. Like we spoke with you uh, literally right after you were drafted by San Diego in December. We got to chat a little bit with you. You were actually overseas, I believe at the time um, yeah. with the event. So, so how are you? How are you feeling? Um, I do remember from that interview uh specifically one of the things we were chatting a little bit about was that you said that you were going to try to get some friends recommendations about like socal for like good uh, food spots try them out it's safe to say you've had a little bit of time there with san diego <laughs> right since we chatted in december what are some of your your go-to places now that you've had some time out there i've got a few um yeah i definitely got, i have like a note in my phone and it's like recommendations and it's just like Scroll and scroll. I haven't even hit all of them probably, but my favorites, I've got Barefoot Coffee. It's like close to our facilities, close to my apartment. Um, and it's just like a good study spot, nice place to go read a book. Um, and then like, I mean, there's just so many good spots for Mexican food. It's like hard to pick one. It's, it's yeah. really like what area I'm in. I'm like, I'll just go mm -hmm. to one, but I like, um, I like Karina's a lot. That's been like my recent go-to. Okay, I with all the it. with all the Mexican spots, is there like when if any of the ones that you hit up, is there like a typical cuisine that you're gonna go to? Is it gonna be more like an actual plated dinner, like enchilada style type of, of meal, or are you just gonna keep it simple with tacos? Usually tacos or a burrito. Yeah, yeah, that's the go-to. Can't go wrong <laughs> with either of those. I mean, yeah. honestly, they sound delicious no matter what you're going for. I'm glad you've gotten to try a lot of the different foods. You've got your list, depending on where you are specifically in the city to hit up. But first full season for you on the pitch in San Diego, in the NWSL as a professional. Um, and it's been different than the college side. And you talked to us about this, understanding that it was going to be more physical. The speed of play was going to be a lot faster. The talent of the players around you was going to be elevated, um, increasingly elevated. And watching you this year, you just handled it so seamlessly. Was What was something this year that maybe you weren't expecting to, but you learned stepping into the professional game? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's so different from the college game. And I think I knew that going in, but, um, you know, you can prepare for it. But once you're in it, I think you always have to adjust. So um, I think just like we had a six week preseason period, which was like really, I think, great for all players just to like ramp up and like prevent injury and things like that. But I think especially for rookies coming in, it's like great to get in with the team and kind of understand the style of play and, you know, the level that we're expected to play at now. Um, let's see what has surprised me. Um, I don't know. I guess I think uh, something that's at least for San Diego, that's like happily surprised me is like, the support we've gotten in our first year has been like absolutely incredible. And, um, you know, we talked about how like SoCal is kind of a soccer hub in the U S and, um, I've known that, but I think just to see how much support the NWSL has gotten in like in our first game at Snapdragon and our, and even in our playoff game. Um, yeah, I think that's been like the, the coolest thing about, um, just being a pro now. And I think especially being our first year in San Diego, I think it's just great for us to just keep building upon this every year. Yeah. The fans, they show up, they show out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've represented quite well uh, yeah. this year, no matter the facility, quite frankly, it's been really, really cool to see and cover and witness uh, something else really cool for you uh, in this season is you've, you've spent a lot of time with the U S women's national team uh, throughout the duration of your first pro season in NWSL. Uh, making your return in April, staying on 
with the roster for CONCACAF W Championship um, and most recently the friendlies that took place in, in Europe. For you personally, what, what do you feel has been maybe like your, your biggest uh, development for you with, with your time specifically with, with the national team? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's been an honor to be in this year and I think it's, it's like a goal for me. So something I want to keep building on. Um, yeah, I think just now training at that level day to day in a pro environment makes the transition into camp and then back to club, um, a lot more smooth for me. And I think, um, yeah, I think that's just like confidence wise speed of play, um, just kind of knowing that I'm training on that level and being able to, I mean, camp is another intensity, but being able to, you know, bring it when I get there and know that I can drive the level. It's not just me trying to keep up with it um, is something that's huge for me. So yeah, I think just having that environment day to day has made a huge difference for me. We've seen that difference translate from uh, April when you were called up and really translate back into the league playing with San Diego because under wave head coach, Casey Stoney, um, she has a big emphasis on defense. She's told us that we've had her on the pod. We, we know that's a big point of emphasis. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she relied on you a lot this year. And as a, a rookie to be that constant presence at center back next to a rotation of players around you. And ultimately you ended up wearing the captain's armband for the San Diego wave team. Can you describe your arc at San Diego under Casey Stoney from the start of preseason until wearing the captain's armband and heading into the postseason. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I came in just like excited to play under her play with the team. Um, and I feel like that's still the same. Like, I feel like I'm still learning so much and that's been like a great kind of journey for me this season. Um, but I think, I think a big thing for me was just like building confidence, um, and, um, you know, just like establishing myself at a pro level. And um, I think it's important to do that, like thinking about yourself first, and then you can like expand on, you know, being a leader and things like that. And I think that's something that Casey has always emphasized um, with to all players and to me, just like, um, you know, trying to be a leader and developing those skills, especially um, like, it doesn't matter if you're a rookie or you've been in the league for however many years, it's like anyone can be a leader on our team. And I think that's really special. And I think that, you know, kind of makes us unique in this league, but, um, yeah, it was an honor to wear, um, the armband and, um, yeah, I think it just means a lot to me that she has that trust in me that my teammates have that trust in me. Um, and we've been able to make it this far. <laughs> It is such an honor. How did you find out about it? Who told you? How was the conversation? Kind of describe that for us. Um, well, we have a leadership group, so it's been like it usually goes throughout that. But um, yeah, I saw it in my locker when I got to the game. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> what an awesome surprise! <laughs> Does that ever like, add like a layer of like? nerves like ahead of a game though like you're just like oh okay like this is the energy we're we're bringing today <laughs> I don't think so I think um I mean like I said everyone you know can step up and be captain or, or leader and um like I think we have a lot of players who you know fill a leadership role um and yeah I mean Casey before the game was just like just play like yourself play your normal game like it's like and I think that's what I did and um that's what I try to do when what, no matter what the circumstances. Is that the best surprise you've ever found in your locker room? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've had some like snacks and stuff. So yes. <laughs> I, was say, I'm sure, I like, would imagine the that like candy, <laughs> the snacks get thrown in there, but like, Hey, the captain's arm man. I'm sure no, that's I'm up just there. Kidding. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> No, no, I love that. Like snacks, Trump, and arm van. I love that from you. That's yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, the journey continues uh, for you, Naomi. You've been uh, you've been nominated not just for one, not just two, but three uh, end of year awards: MVP, Rookie of the Year, and Defender of uh, the Year. What was your reaction when you saw that that you were uh, a finalist and not just one, but but three different categories? Um, I don't know. I mean, I was like, obviously it's a huge honor. I was like surprised. I was like excited. <laughs> um, yeah, all of it. And I, yeah, I mean, I think it's been great that, 
you know, Alex, Kaylin, Casey have all been nominated for awards too. And I think it just kind of shows um, just the impact we've been able to make, you know, not only like in San Diego or in our community, just like on the league in our first year. And I think we said that at the beginning of the year, like that's always been the goal. Um, and yeah, I think it's just exciting that, you know, people are up for individual awards, but, you know, we're focused on semifinal and hopefully the final coming up in this weekend. I love the focus. You're always locked in and, and you are on the pitch defensively, always locked in um, because offensively you have players like Alex Morgan and Taylor Korniak that work so well together and can combine. And I was a defender in college. And one of my favorite parts was being able to see the entirety of the field. And for you as a center back, you have that great visual vantage to see everything that's happening. And when you're watching um, your forwards, specifically Alex Morgan, Taylor Korniak, what is it about their relationship and, and partnership on the field that works so well? I mean, they've played together for a few years now. So I think they kind of have that chemistry and it's like, you know, if I feel like they're always reading each other um, and gets us a lot of goals. I'm like, good job, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's great to see. And I think, um, yeah, I think everyone who's kind of stepped into those attacking roles has made a huge difference for us. Um, Alex, obviously getting the golden boot um, has been like incredible, um, not only on the field, but off the field. So yeah, I mean, just seeing seeing a goal build up and then happen is always just, I think the best feeling ever. And I'm like, I'm sprinting to that celebration. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, it's, it's really cool to see. I love that. Can't be left out. That's the other side of it. No, too, right? I've got to make the celebration pick. <laughs> you're going to make you're, it. <laughs> and on the one hand, it's like, you have that moment where you could like see the entire pitch. And like, as you're seeing it, you're like, wait a minute, I can't be left out of this one. Love that for you. <laughs> Let's let's look ahead to the the near future right now. You're, the team is going from a quarterfinal against Chicago Red Stars to a semifinal against Portland Thorns FC. And that's a team that San Diego has a little bit of familiarity with now, right? It'll be the fifth meeting between the two teams in 2022 when you all take the oh. pitch on, on semifinal match day. What are maybe some of the different challenges that that you're preparing for in the semifinal com compared to the uh, quarterfinal? Yeah, I mean, Chicago, Portland, both very established, you know, teams in the league. So um, I think Chicago was a good test for us. I feel like probably the, the main difference is they play a different system. Um, but other than that, just being at home versus away and being able to, you know, manage momentum when the crowd isn't on our side um, and just kind of make sure we stay locked in and um, don't let like the moment, you know, get away from us or get too big for us. Um, and I think we've had some big away wins this year, so we know how to, you know, kind of manage that, but uh, it's going to be heightened that it's a playoff game. So just making sure that, um, you know, we're just staying locked in, um, staying together and just keeping that belief. Naomi, when Sandra asked that question, she mentioned that this was going to be the fifth meeting between yeah. Portland and San Diego. You were like, wow, you didn't know that? I didn't realize it was five, but yeah, I mean, we played them a lot this year. <laughs> yeah, you've got the Challenge Cup. There's a couple of matches there, regular season. Uh, do you remember, like, do you remember those games? Like anything stand out specifically from those four previous meetings against San Diego, or excuse me, against Portland? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I remember, yeah. I am I mean, they obviously one of my good friends, Sophia Smith plays for them. Um, so yeah, I mean, they have a great, I think they have a great attack, um, solid in the back too. So um, yeah, I mean, we know they're, we know they're dangerous um, and we know we can be dangerous too. So I think it's just trying to take our game to them when we go, when we go there. Now, you just mentioned her forward for the Thorns, Sophia Smith, a good friend of yours. Uh, you're, yeah. You'll are you be matched up directly with her because she's a forward and you're the center back. Um, I, I want to know, like, kind of what happens on the pitch between that matchup? Are you guys, like, <laughs> chirping at each other? Are you, are you catching up? Kind of what happens there? <laughs> <laughs> Not, I mean, I feel like during the game, we're just, like, focused. Um, 
we always laugh that it's kind of like funny. It's like the first time we've ever played against each other. Um, because we've always been on, we played together youth camps, national team, and at Stanford. So we were we were laughing about that the first time we played against each other. But um, yeah, usually business on the field, and then we'll like catch up after the game or you know hang out if we have time. Love that, love that. Uh, we always like to get a little reflective at times towards the end of the the interviews with with some players. You know, the the Wave have had a pretty uh, remarkable inaugural season uh, this year to date so as as you look ahead to to the semifinal there's a lot to remember that you know all the things that this team accomplished what are some some special moments uh, that have stood out for you with this expansion side this year um let's see I remember our first win versus Angel City in um Challenge Cup that was pretty special um just like for the club um, our first win in regular season <laughs> versus yeah. Houston, um, that was pretty special. Um, there's so many, our, I mean, our Snapdragon, our first game at Snapdragon was like incredible. i our team at Wave did such a good job to, you know, I feel like it was like the whole San Diego soccer community together. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was so cool to be a part of, I think you know, as a player, but also just like as a part of the league, I think it was just such a special moment um, for us. And then our first playoff game, like the atmosphere, sorry, I have like so many. <laughs> yeah, no, keep going. Good, as you should. Yeah, our first playoff game was just like the like going into extra time and then winning, like the atmosphere in the stadium was just like incredible. Um, and just having our fans supporting us the whole time um, was just so special to kind of get to get that first win in front of them. But that's also something that's like really special, like just listening to you talk about it. Like it's not just like a couple of things. It's like you could you could list them off and tick them off like yeah, one, keep going. One or the <laughs> other. Yeah. And, and hopefully uh, you all continue to you know find success and maybe you could take off a couple more in this uh, in, in this postseason. Uh, let's close it out with with a little bit of a, a fun. Um, you know we've been chatting with a lot of different players during this postseason, and a big part of preparing for a, a postseason match has been the routine, right? Make sure that you're eating right. Make sure that you're uh, you know getting your treatments in when you have to get them in. But a part of that is also taking care of yourself and, and maybe treating yourself to, to those certain moments of downtime. So I'm going to ask you is what is Naomi Gurma doing, uh, you know, in her downtime to sort of keep her focused in the semifinals? Is there like a certain book you're reading? Is there a certain playlist you've got going on? Let us know. Um, I've got two. Um, okay. Well, I'm in school, so I'm, but I'm not going to count that as downtime. Right. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, no, um, I've been, I've been reading a lot, like throughout, um, just, I've been, I was out of school for summer, so I was like flipping away, um, especially in camps and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's been my, that's my, I like, I like going to coffee shops, ordering a vanilla latte and reading my book. <laughs> Wow. I love that. So you read, <laughs> it seems like you read a lot of books. I do as well. I love to read. Uh, what's one of the best ones that you've read over the last several months? Oh, I need to think of a good one. Let's see. I read, um, I liked Good Morning Monster. That was a good, really okay. good book. We I'll actually have to write did a little like book club at camp and read that one together at qualifiers. Um, oh, I love that. So that was a really good that. one. Um, yeah, no, I'd I love say it. that was my top. And then I've, I just flip in between, like I'll read a bunch of rom-coms and I'm like, oh, I need a more serious book. <laughs> yeah, no, you gotta, you gotta keep it, uh, yeah. you gotta mix it up. Yeah, you gotta I'm keep it balanced, you know. You know? Now, yeah. are you yeah. a, a hard book copy reader? Or do you have a Kindle? Like what, what's kind of your style of reading? Oh, so I am, I really like, paper you know just like having the book but I did get a Kindle for my friends got me one for my birthday actually because I wanted to take it with me it's just so much more practical when you're traveling you can't be traveling with like lugs of books honestly yeah on our last I think on my last trip I 
had to my bag was overweight because of my books oh, no. <laughs> and I was like I should have brought my Kindle <laughs> Le- lesson learned that yeah. was that was the thing that you learned that uh, like when yeah you're, that's like, the oh, biggest yeah. thing I've learned from this that's year bring your Kindle <laughs> don't pack your books use the electronic device I love yeah. that no that sounds that sounds perfect that sounds like so cozy and perfect a yeah. book a vanilla latte get your read on I love that uh Naomi thank you so much for for joining us on attacking third today congrats on winning the first round of the playoffs and best of luck in the semifinal thanks to everyone listening and joining us along with this episode reminder to catch Naomi Germa and the San Diego Wave FC against Portland Thorns FC in the semifinal on Sunday, October 23rd. We will be back with a full weekend preview for Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Naomi Germa. This was Attacking Third.